Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Red Pill Tamales. It's your boy Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. What's up, buddy? How are you? Man, I am back into civilization. I'm thawing out. Uh, shout outs to Houston, Texas. Shout out to the whole state of Texas. Our our low power grid is a little engine that could. <laughs> I think we're out of the uh, woods. I think we still have to boil our water. So we apologize on the delay on these episodes, but these are going to be the best, some of the best, most action packed. I think you're going to gain a lot of value from these episodes right here. Are you saying it because uh, you're so flustered that you've been having to sit in the cold with no water you got all this laundry to do we haven't been able to work all this information's coming in ted cruz cruising for a bruising ERCOT, scandal enron style alex jones alex jones had his bullhorn out bruh yeah you got to come in hot with this there's a lot going on uh should i shout out tour dates real quick if you got them yeah uh you know somewhat we have uh it's the freedom of speech tour we have san angelo texas coming up march 13th that's right, man. San Angelo, March 13th. Then we hit Mission, Texas, down in the valley, March 26th. Then we have New Braunfels coming up after that. Brea, California, God willing. It doesn't get postponed again. And uh, Killeen, Texas. But all those dates and more will be up on chingobling.com. Por favor, believe it. Sas. And shout out to the patrons, man. You guys are the reason that uh, I'm able to run my mouth and I still have a little bit of freedom of speech left. And uh, this is like my... The stress valve. This is what I get get to come on here and vent, and also, also you know talk about where I'm at in my life. Uh, for example, I don't want to be stressing over this politics shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I, I literally had to tell myself, like, hey man, for the sake of stress and basically, I care too much. That's the problem. I Rob. understand. I understand. I think it's part of my ego that I want to be like a control freak and I want to just save everybody and just be like, yo, look at the propaganda. Do y'all not understand that this left versus right stuff is going down all over the planet? Do y'all not see how, you know, other countries and what's going on and, and our freedoms and our first world privileges really got exposed over this uh, snow vid, yeah. snow vid 2021. <laughs> we just had where it was two, it was multiple crises on top of each other it's like man it's a pandemic you got to wear three four masks and shit motherfuckers got to get vaccinated and you got to uh, wrap up all your pipes because it's never been this cold i believe like over in 122 years yeah. or something like mm -hmm. that so all of our infrastructure all of the way our houses are built the where the pipes are the plumbing uh, i mean the fucking turbines the whole nine everything the solar here panels, is not built for that it's not built the way it is people be like Stop hating on the turbines, bro. They got them in Sweden, and they were just fine. It's like, bro, these motherfuckers cut corners. They're not gonna build them how they're built in Sweden. And it's not even we're in Houston. And it's not even. It might not even be corners. It could just be literally. And I heard somebody describing. It might have been Dan Crenshaw or somebody that there is an extra layer of protection. We'll call it. They called it a cold package that is not a part of these turbines because it would have cost the taxpayers or the, mm. or the Texas multi and multi-million dollars more to make these like they are New England yeah. or, or some other other yeah. cold area. It's just not now, what they're made for. And I also don't, I'm also very weary about, obviously this was hella inconvenient. I mean, people died. It, it shouldn't have happened. Um, it was a pain in the ass. However, I also don't want to overcorrect and let the pendulum swing so far in the opposite direction to where now we're letting the federal government come down here in the Lone Star State <clears throat> in a beautiful state of Texas with our beautiful power grid and start regulating. And I'm, I'm not an economist or nothing like that, but I, I'm just very weary of, for example, I posted a, a video to the What Did He Said page. Make sure you make sure y'all follow us on Instagram at What Did He Said. And the dude was saying how right now the truth gets lost in the narrative, meaning everybody from the left, like a lot of Democrat, liberal, progressive, AOC, Bernie, uh, Green New Deal, Greta Thunberg type type Beto. People, uh, Beto O'Rourke type people, not only do they want to take your guns and your freedom of speech, but they want you to have nothing but solar panels and wind turbines. So the left is, is looking at, oh, keep voting Republican, silly Texans, because here you are shivering in the cold and shit, waking up, you can see your breath and shit. My baby, dude, the first night, my baby woke up singing, ha, como dice? Happy, no dice happy borde, dice, ha, la borde, she says, hala, 
Halaborde to you. Halaborde. She hits that note. Yeah. Why? And, and you just see her little breath. Oh, oh, okay. And I was like, oh, it's yeah, it was no one's birthday. Oh. She just likes to sing. And I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. You can see our breath in the living room. Like, we got a little palate. And I was like, oh, no, we're going to get sick. We can't be seeing our breath yeah. when we wake up. So we went to my sister's house. We were over there for a few days. Como arrimados and shit. Pinche, I know, man. Pinche refugees and shit. I was like, hey, sister, uh, thanks for everything you've done for me since I was little. And thanks for the shelter. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can't relax at someone else's house because my brother-in-law's putting up. Uh, uh, he's like nailing up a blanket. and He's tr trying to start a fire and shit like Mr. that. Mr. Fix is like, what can I help you with? Yeah, no. I I took my eye off the ball. I'm just like, do, 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 like doing something. Yeah. Somebody's always like, help him. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, shit. And I got it. Hey, hey, man, you got another hammer? He's like, no, nah, man, I got it. Maybe just hand me a nail or something. Dude, we're hosting two friends and their dog. Uh, they, they still will not have uh, water until, and heat until four or five more days. Pinche desmadre. Because so many pipes in their complex went out, and they're just like, it's just impossible to get somebody to fix it right away. So they just got heat and electricity today. And, but so, but they've already they've been with us since Sunday, so they've been here all this week and probably be there all next week. And we're great friends, right? But you can already tell they're like, we don't want to overstay our welcome. Like, what the fuck are you gonna do? You don't have any heat. You don't have any water. Yeah, like, yeah. just be cool. Everybody be cool. Like, it's it not that, yeah, it's not a big we, of a deal. We might not be cool after this. Yeah, but you won't die, and your dog is gonna live. And you know what? When we bounced from my sisters, it was one of those decisions where it's like I check my ring cameras on my phone, so I'm like, okay, hey babe, we got power hmm. at the moment. We right. don't know when the power's gonna come back so like i even started you know when we were in the house and shit without power I, I got so desperate i'm like all right enough already okay they uh dear lord biden we voted for you sir <laughs> just so my fbi man could cut the lights back on and shit like all right man i didn't vote for trump Stupid. i didn't vote That's for trump so god damn funny so the day we decided to come back home um i was checking the ring cameras i'm like okay we got power we just don't know how much longer because we didn't want to leave my sisters in Pearland, come home in the third in the tray. That's a mission, especially when it's so cold and risky. Yeah, you you trying to see because one time, one time during the fiasco, I had to come home. We had to um, turn off the water. The main. Yeah, because that hard freeze was, freeze was coming. I only had one little little beady pipe in the back by the water hose break. My neighbor helped helped me fix that, but like so many people we know. Got properties and shit. Um, our tenant hit us up. Hey, where's the thing to turn off the water? They're way over there in Katy. We're like, uh, I'll send you some Google image pics of how it's supposed to look and then look for it. <laughs> <laughs> if not, you're going to need one of those big plumber keys to shut off the line from the city. So I learned a lot, too. I got yeah. a little bit handier. All right. But um, it was a fucking fiasco. We appreciate being able to just don't take it for granted. Like, I know this is first world shit. Like... You used to just walking in the room, hitting the switch, and the fucking light be on. You used to just, oh, I'm, I'm going to kill some time. I'm going to procrastinate. Let me turn on the TV. And the shit just be there. But sometimes it ain't. <laughs> because although Boston and Chicago and Denmark and Sweden and all these places, their infrastructure, they're, they're ready for the cold. All their shit, their natural gas pipelines are insulated for that. All of our shit failed. Like everything, like the nuclear stuff, it, the safety measure kicked in where it's like, oh, two code, eh, shut down, which shows how safe nuclear is. Exactly. Like now, generation five nuclear. Um, that's what handled our base load energy, our natural gas. Uh, Houston is the what? Energy capital. Mm -hmm. uh, however, <laughs> we didn't have, however, we didn't have any energy past few days. Well, that's the weirdest part, right? Like, that's what we're all trying to get to the bottom of and what we want answers for is like, how exactly did that happen? And then you, as I was starting to read about that, you sent me the Alex Jones. And I know we're saying Alex Jones. Some people immediately roll their eyes. Yeah, but he's, he's right a lot. He is right a lot. And he's got the bullhorn and the fucking big old truck. And he's at the ERCOT HQ or whatever. Just like, we've got the documents, basically. Like, there's some Enron type scandal going on here. And I'm like, okay, now I'm really ready to see what the fuck's been going on. And why also we're all hearing that prices are going to go up like astronomically did you see that yeah but i don't i don't have the evidence to really know so tell us uh as far as i heard because i have some buddies that work for center point right and they had said the same things that some people were reporting that prices could go up like nine thousand percent per kilowatt so 
you're looking at, and again, don't know why or don't know how, but that would equate to if you pay $150, $200 per, for your bill, you're probably going to spend $450 to $500 a month for your electricity bill. I guess, again, it goes depending on provider, how this all works out, don't know why, but I was like, damn. And on top of that, they're trying to restore power, and people are thinking that it's center point workers' faults, right? So they're cussing them out, giving them the bird. They're at gas stations fueling up their trucks, and they're like, shouldn't you put the snacks down and get the power back on? It's like, yo, it's not center point's fault, you dummies. This yeah. is an ERCOT issue. This is a dis- distribution issue, not the provider's mm-hmm. issue, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just, it's fucking weird. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, man, um, like I was saying earlier, the truth gets lost in a narrative. And this event is almost like a microcosm of the overall conversation, which is left blaming the right, right blaming the left, people vilifying each other. They're just looking for that one article to where they could own, like, <gasps> Ted Cruz went to Cancun. See? Ooh, Keep voting red. And, and now people are trying to use that to be like, we see, that's why we need to turn uh, Texas blue. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not. What? Hold on now. The we fuck does that even We mean? don't want to be California now. You know, I get it. We got a lot of blue cities, but you sure don't want blue city and blue state because now you just get into this murky waters of uh, Antifa land. and Yeah, East Coast, uh, West Coast style. Yeah, you know, you just don't want that. Um, so, I mean, I'm very grateful for all of these first world things because it reminded me of the rancho. Oh, yeah. Like, I, we had to have a big pot of boiled water. We still got it. Uh, See, so oh, you want to brush, brush your teeth? Okay, go scoop you up some of that. And it just reminded me of being at, at the Rancho Mexico. It was like, at Grandma's, like, no electricity. Yeah, oh, it's nighttime. Cut on the candles and maybe y'all could chit chat for a little bit. Yeah. But ain't shit else to do. Take your ass to sleep. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, early to rise, the rooster's going to be up. Um, Did you have to get on top to, you know, put the, like, turn on the boiler? What, is that what it was? It'll, like in Mexico, like you'd get like uh, my grandma's was on top of like where the restroom, where the toilet was, right? Mm-hmm. So you'd have to get out there, put the wood oh, in there. Oh, y'all was rich, flame. man. Y'all had toilets. We did. She had a <laughs> toilet. She had one toilet and a fucking water hose to shower. I was like, man. So as a bidet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that cold water on you, dude. You'd have to climb up to this fucking thing, put the wood in there, start it up, and then go take a you know use the restroom, flush the water, and not all that. Yando, not that right, and then the you're sitting on a on a basically a frozen toilet on top of it. Man. It's literally <clears throat> zero degrees, and your ass and your your nuts are just sticking to this fucking bowl. Well, shit. At my grandma's on my mom's house on my mom's side, they supposedly had a city house too. I never saw it. We it was always the dirt road ranch. Yep. Outhouse water from the well. Um. If, if everybody went to the city and then you decided to stay, like, oh, I'm just going to stay at the ranch. Y'all, I'll see y'all later. And these motherfuckers start taking long. You'd be bored as shit. It's like, okay, I done played with all the chickens I could play with. <laughs> I done played marbles in the dirt. Um, I almost caught typhoid fever uh, going in that chicken coop. Um, I done stared at the fucking cornfield. And, um, but yeah, man, roughing it outhouse style. Like a lot of other countries, man, like, you know, Venezuela and... Uh, I'm, it sucks to compare, you know. Right. But like my brother-in-law, he used to work in Kosovo, which used to be part of the uh, USSR. And when the USSR broke up, he was out there working. And um, he's a safety manager. He's worked in a whole bunch of countries. And he was telling me how uh, Kosovo and Bosnia, they had beef. So they would like run across the border, eye for an eye, killing each other. Like, hey, you killed 10 of my homies. We about to smoke 10 of your homies with machetes and shit and um and he was just saying how where they were staying on the base military base they had access to you know generators and electricity um like doctors healthcare type shit but like the locals it was like eh, you might have power you might not damn and we saw this really good documentary on netflix i recommend it it's called cuba and the cameraman okay it's on netflix so Basically, man, it's this dude, he had, a, he had a home video camera in the 70s. This was around the time I think people were, um, a lot of hippies and shit were protesting, like Vietnam. It was like the beginning of the Occupy type of 99, 1%, almost like socialism type of shit, where people were being very against capitalism. So they were very curious about what was going on in Cuba. So he ends up taking a trip to Cuba, meeting like several families and Uh, With his little Spanish, he just started documenting. Like, oh, oh, can I see your apartment? Oh, wow. Yeah, this is my bedroom. This is where I live. Like, I was surprised how all a lot of them people in Cuba spoke English. So I I believe that 
maybe Castro and the regime and the state made sure to everybody, like they were just really on everybody. Like the doctors might not get paid a lot, but these kids knew their math. They knew their science and shit. Um, not trying to justify or fucking give props to a fucking right. dictator and communism by no means. So homeboy, he would fly out there like at least every 10 years. He'd go visit the farmer. Hola, Cristobal, how you been? Hey, I see you have two ox. And it's like, where's the other ox? Oh, they stole them. Someone ate them. You know, people are hungry. So every time he'd check up on them, they'd be like, oh, I'm here just doing my part, helping the country. You know, don't want to say nothing bad about the regime. And, you know, I'm just doing my part. And yeah, I might not get paid, but, you know, I'm a farmer and I'm waiting on irrigation, but I'm doing my part for the, for the country. And then 10 years later, how's it going? Ah, it's not, it's not going, it's not going as well it was, as it was last time, 10 years later. It's like decades. So this dude, he's getting older and older every time. And these people he's going to visit, like, hey, um, hey, you're the little boy Wilbur, you were in my video, but now he's 16. Damn. Next time he sees him, he's 26. It, it was just fascinating. He got to interview Castro, and he was just there like a fly on the wall, showing the behind the scenes of Cuba, like how many people were brainwashed and were like giving credit to the state. Like, hey, you know, the party has provided, you know, not as much as they would like, but they always provided. It's like, yeah, yeah you're in a bread line. Yeah. Fuck. So it, it's, 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 uh, it's interesting. I kind of want to, what, what was that called? Cuba and the Cameraman? Cuba and the Cameraman. On Netflix? Yes, sir. All right. So I want to circle back, though. You were talking about uh, how you, you, care too much, like you, you care too much, right? The stress levels. Yeah. And I kind of want to mm-hmm. circle back to that. Yeah, yeah. Because I, uh, I, I feel you. And I felt that for a long time. And it's just, it's a little overwhelming at times when there's, a, you're, it, we're all inundated with so much information. Mm-hmm. And we know those that like, they choose to just, uh, cherry pick certain things, yell at the top of their lungs about it, and then meanwhile there's like this salu- the sea of other information that they're completely neglecting. You're like, you just, I just want you to kind of mm-hmm. see what's going on. How yeah. do you, how do you, how are you managing it right now? Well, last night, Marisol and I had a discussion, and um, I can't remember how it came up, but at the end of the conversation, it's basically this: Hey, look, we like red pill tamales. We love the patrons. You know. This is a, a, I think there's some, a lot of value that can come out of these discussions. Mm -hmm. For example, the No Mamas Award goes to Ted Cruz. The optics are horrible. Although some people might be like, who gives a fuck? He's a, he's a senator. It's not all on one senator. And, you know, shit, I'd go to Cancun too. You know what I'm saying? Like if I I had planned on it. I mean, yeah, maybe he should have canceled. Cause look here, Ted Cruz. It's not like you were flying private. How was you going to get away with the shit? Because you over there on Delta Airlines and shit. You over there and uh, now boarding group C uh, 10 through 29 and shit. And he get on there with that funny ass haircut. It's like, bro, we, you're Ted Cruz. We see you. The mask don't cover your whole face. We still see the little eyes and the funny ass haircut. <laughs> you're not flying private. People over here cold as shit. And you going to Cancun. The left is going to run with that shit and just be like, there you go. Keep, keep voting Republican. Look at how they do, y'all. Um... And again, I'm not like Mr. fucking Republican because, hey, if if there's a good Democrat um, person running, they probably have my vote. I'm very curious and still learning about libertarian. And Trump wasn't your traditional Republican. A lot of these old rhinos don't even fuck with Trump. They turn in their back because they still want to be down with Washington. So anyway, don't get it twisted. Um, but the moral of the story is this, you know. I realize that I care too much yeah. and I be trying to save everybody. But you know what? It's getting to the point where it's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a shit. Don't ask me. That's on you. You know, like, I, you know, like, hey, if you tune in and you're a patron, cool. But I'm not going to go out of my way. Like, guys, you guys are just it, it, right. it, leftism, leftism. And you got to peep, you know. Peep the writings on the wall and don't let them sell you this bullshit narrative. And they trying to they trying to have all this rhetoric. You know, they trying to defund the police and there's all this hip- hypocrisy and, and y'all need to wake up. No, I said, I don't know. I don't know. Because at some point it's kind of like, OK, yeah, you want to be up to date and you want to be like, oh, man, did, you know, oh, Ben Shapiro, what Ben Shapiro had to say about this shit, especially when you're in a crisis and you got this new president and. There's a whole, things are dubious. It's kind of like, okay, what's going on? How's the media covering this dude? What's he doing with this foreign policy? What did I hear? He's doing what with Iran? And 
We don't know. He's just playing Mario Kart with his granddaughter. That's all we hear about. I mean, exactly, right? They're making uh, hearts for Valentine's, and, and he, he likes a, an occasional good wood fire going in the Oval Office, and even sometimes he'll add a log himself. <laughs> That's what the media is doing, and they call it the honeymoon era. It's kind of like, okay, go easy on it for a couple weeks as he's easing into the job. The dude is a walking gaff, right? Like, motherfucker open his mouth, he's going to say some shit that sounds borderline racist, like Latinos and African Americans don't know how to log on and, you know, get online and, and see how they can get that vaccine from Walgreens. And it's kind of like, bro, you sounding real old and ignorant and racist. You know, whether, whether you meant it to come out like that, it may be interpreted like that. And I know the right is going to run with that shit and make sure they don't add no context and let's make Biden look as bad as we possibly can. But, you know, stress levels and the time and energy that goes into, let me see what Tim Pool had to say. Yeah. You know, that little time and energy could have been, hey man, what happened to that guitar thing? Y'all y'all still learning that? Or you learning piano? You learning photography? Or shit, you learning plumbing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> For the next disaster. <laughs> Hurricane season around the corner. You got a bug out bag. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like that man it's kind of like risk assessment it's like either you keep caring too much and your fucking stress hormone your cortisol levels are through the roof you know you, you checking up you getting on your phone looking on twitter and shit you posting some shit you found a fire ass meme and it's like hey you on your own man need more that's why that's i try to warn y'all the page that's <laughs> hashtag you warned y'all for months now yeah. trending on instagram now that's the beauty about <clears throat> having people that love what, what you say and what you do and what we put out and what the patrons and you know the number one fans are for is that they'll share the content right they'll share the clips they'll try to get a person or a friend or a family member to kind of peep game like what's going on versus you literally trying to duke it out <laughs> with people in the comment sections nonstop, and it's just i mean the idea is to be informed aware so that you can later edutain right come mm -hmm. to the podcast with the information with your own well-formed opinions or even if it's a generalized opinion mm -hmm. the people are here to listen to you and hopefully they go out and turn share the share the info right yeah um you know like you said it's just a fine balance between trying to be up on what's going on but also making sure you carve out time and you just keep it contained, kind of like, okay, <clears throat> Rob and I are going to sit down and chit-chat and hopefully make it entertaining and valuable and productive. And I feel like that, the whole thing about stressing too much and caring too much and mm -hmm. trying to red pill everybody, some people probably like, Chingo, we've been trying to tell you this shit for about three months. I know, like, right? Like, lay off the gas, bro. Just leave these motherfuckers alone. Let them walk off a cliff. Fuck it. They want to be crash dummies and believe Jimmy Kimmel and Trevor Noah and fuck it. Let them. Let them keep voting the way they vote and, and, and virtue signaling and let them keep being social justice warriors trying to unlearn. We need to unlearn how we're all part of the white supremacist. The you know fuck is that? Is that what they're doing? Yeah. There's a dude. I thought you brought him up one time. There's this dude. He's on TikTok. I don't know his name, but he went viral because he was like, I am. He's like, it's not that hard, guys. He's like. If I've benefited from the systems and structures of white supremacy and being white in America, then it's like I am the oppressor. It's not that hard, guys. And it's like, but we have to unlearn. He's doing these hands. If you're not watching this on YouTube, you're just listening. He's like, you have to unlearn. It's almost like Vogue, yeah. like Madonna dance. You have to unlearn and do the work. Do the work and unlearn. I do remember that. I remember the clapping because we, we you added it to a couple of memes where it's like, am I, or I don't know what it was, like I'm doing it right. Do the work. Do the work. I don't know. But I mean, that that the way that dude talks, that's just my impression of like the woke social justice warrior. Yeah. Like context doesn't matter. Justin Timberlake should have apologized sooner, you know, oh, because yeah. he's white. We haven't even talked about I that. I don't even know what the fuck happened with Justin Timberlake? Supposedly they made him look real bad in this Britney Spears thing, but he just had to go on the apology tour. Oh, he just probably, got in front of something. Probably for being a white straight male. Yeah. That that might have been his crime. They hit him with the uh, Morgan Whalen uh, apology tour. Um, get, in line, get your ass in line and, and fit the official narrative and, and you're bad because you're white type of thing. But uh, my homie Michael Berry... Um, he, he got a little get together today and he's like hey uh 
you know, my only rule is like, we're not talking any politics, like no politics. And I was like, man, I feel you because, you know, it's just like, man, people, they just not going to learn. It's hard to red pill. It's hard to deprogram people. They just, a lot of folks still believe the official narrative and, um, politics came up while we're at my sister's. (laughs) Okay. It was funny because I forget how it came up, but I think Mighty Soul asked my sister, like, oh, so, so when did you start kind of peeping game as to what was going on? And my brother-in-law was like, she still don't be peeping game. You know, like, (laughs) (laughs) almost like she still got TDS. Oh, okay. Basically. And she's like, what? No, I don't, Ruben. No, I don't. You know, and it it got awkward. (laughs) I was like, uh, it's okay. This, This cold is crazy. Yeah, dude. So I feel like that could be the moral the little hopefully that could be some a nugget of value as a reminder to everybody obviously you guys care about this stuff because you're patrons and you're tuning in you're at least curious maybe you just you just like to pass the time and hear us talk but um it's just so much and it's you know with social media and the news and the crisis on top of the cr- oh shit they want us to wear three masks now and bill gates just said we need a third vaccine and what the fuck they're saying we can't get back to normal until uh, 2022 and it's like you, you see it, you know it's china and it's like <sighs> okay man let's just fucking relax a little bit um there's one thing i wanted to say about all this shit oh all right let me talk about this because i won't forget Yesterday, I had to run to Walgreens. Ah, uh, yes. I was wondering when you were going to bring that up. Yeah, sorry. I almost forgot. I have it here in my notes somewhere. Yesterday, I had to run to Walgreens to get some um, D batteries, some wine, uh, some ¿cómo se dice? paper plates and shit, disposable stuff, because it's a pain in the ass even to wash dishes, because it's like, nope, you got to have boiled water for that, yeah. and, or put it in the machine and all this bullshit. You know it's tough when you're going to Walgreens for your wine. Yeah, because we had just made it home. The freeze was coming. We had just finished fixing this little pipe back here uh, behind the house. So I'm not about to make a whole bunch of extra stops. It's like everywhere is a nut house, especially Home Depot. You got everybody and mom in line trying to get some plumbing supplies and shit. All these plumbers making a gazillion dollars. For real. Uh, shout outs to them. So I'm randomly chit-chatting with uh, these three dudes that um they're speaking spanish and somehow it's like no 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 pasale oh habla espanol you know and they start t- talking um oh mexicano mexicano and i was like oh where y'all from chileño some of the chile pero el amigo he lives in austin and the freeze came there was no power no water so we came here we're at an airbnb and what's going on and um we get to talking i'm like hey man so how's everything in chile right now they're like brother brother like don't go don't go. He's like, same thing that's happening in all of South America. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, there's killings. There's no law and order. There's protests. There's burnings. Um, anytime. She, he said the other day, two dudes attacked a cop with machetes. The cop had to shoot one. He said they turned it into a uh, human rights. They turned it into like racism. Uh, the rich versus the poor. Uh, the dude was indigenous um you know it's these white settlers that came and the past regime they gave them land and if you want to go down that rabbit hole just hop on youtube and search around and just put like civil unrest chile or left versus right chile so they're telling me about how they like he's like every night they 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 hijack like two gas uh 18 wheelers and they set them on fire and um every day and you know he says they treat the cops like criminals and you got the media and it's and he's like and it's left versus right and i was like bro that left versus right shit i was like it's everywhere huh you know because i'm you know i'm trying to process the geopolitical aspect of it so i was fascinated i'm like man tell me about that shit he's like he was scared he's like you know i don't really consider myself right but you know you gotta have some law and order so in a way, I got to take a stance, he says. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, no, don't worry. I, I lean, you know, a little bit center right, whatever. Yeah. I'm not over there on no extreme left. That's for sure. And uh, they were like, como te llamas, amigo? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Pedro. He's like, oh, Pedro, Pedro. M- mucha gracia, mucha gracia. I'm going to go boil the water. Thanks to you. You told me I have to boil the water. It sounded Italian and shit. Yeah, for real. I was like, what is this, Mario? 
they have a lot of like Germans and Swedes and go down that rabbit hole, man. But what these dudes were describing, they're, es lo mismo, it's the same thing that's happened in Colombia. And, you know, it's the, the propaganda. And he's like, the politicians, they're using this division so they can govern and they're using this division to get the power. And I was like, oh my God, this shit is spreading, these ideas, this leftism. There's nothing wrong with being Democrat, nothing wrong with being progressive, nothing wrong with being liberal. But those extreme leftist ideas that come in and kind of like hide behind BLM, like hide behind the teachers unions. Uh, Antifa, they're just, ain't no hiding there. They're just straight up anarchists. But the way the media sways. And now I look at like, like the Houston Chronicle did a write up about this freeze thing. And you can just tell. Okay, they lean left because they threw in a little jab at the end where it's like, well, many people feel that, you know, the Republicans you know, yeah. dropped the ball. And it wasn't just wind turbines. It's like, bitch, just tell us you on the left. Yeah. One of the most frustrating parts about all that, too, is, uh, wait, how did you end that conversation with the Chileans? Was it, y'all just talked about it a little bit? And I mean, my mind was blown as they're just telling me this stuff. They're like, they treat the cops like the, va- like the bad guys. He's like, look, so they're like the villains. He's like, and they pointed his, at their phone. He's like, and the social media, the social media, it, it's, it's coming from here. And, and the news and the TV and people don't know. And they're thinking that by spray painting all cops are bastards, which they do that down there, even in Chile, they put ACAB. He's like, they think that by falling in line with the official narrative, like so you don't get canceled and all that, that they're on the right side of history, that everything's justified and, you know... I mean, Chile has its own set of problems. Their economy is different than ours. Um, I'm sure their wealth, dis- the disparity, and I'm not an expert on Chile economics. Yeah. But they sounded very uh, disheartened, saying, like, it's unfortunate that people are, that Chile's going through that, basically. Uh, what I was going to say is to kind of to bring it back to, to Ted Cruz, because <clears throat> he's getting all this shit for it, right? And we kind of just briefly touched on it earlier. Like He should have known better. He should have known better. But one of, the, one of the parts of this whole political game that's the strangest, because there's so many strange aspects to it, is that when something happens, a part of being a politician, the optics that we're all talking about, right, have to be that you are at an area and granted he's from Texas, he's from Houston, right? And we're going through it right now and he leaves. But Anytime a disaster happens, that politician, the president especially, which where the fuck's Biden at, right? It's supposed to be present at the time or at the place of this catastrophe or uh, emergency or, or whatever and pretend like they, not not necessarily that they don't care, but pretend like they're going to do something. We, we expect Ted Cruz to get on his fucking snowplow and get his fucking utility belt and start fixing pipes and, and shit. Like, what's he really going to do? I think when people are mad and they just want answers and then they hear that a politician is going somewhere warm and tropical Yeah. while you're like, where the fuck's my water? What's going on? We're trying to get information. Like people are are frustrated, you know? Um, I mean, thankfully I feel like we're, we're through most of it, obviously, right? We're podcasting. We went to the gym first time in like a week, uh, just now earlier. Um, so I understand, man, people frustrated. That's why I, I don't want to get into politics because shit, I don't want people breathing down my neck over like, man, Chingo had a booger in his nose and then he picked it. <laughs> you know? we here. What was he trying to say by that? You know, was that, was that racist? What is that? Uh, oh, God. <laughs> you know, like they just up your ass, man. They just watching your every little move. So he should have known better. Although, you know, you, me, Mighty Soul was like, I don't give a shit if fucking Ted Cruz, I don't give a fuck. You know, it's not all on him. Who cares where the fuck he's going? I understand why it looks bad, why he probably should have canceled that trip. Like I said, Ted, if you fly in private, maybe you could have got away with it per se, even though it's not your fault and it's not on you. It's like a whole nother department. Um, but how about the shitty friends that leaked the conversation also? like What combo? So her wife, his wife had a text thread with the friends that they invited to join them along with them or whatever. Uh uh And somebody leaked it to the Washington Post or New York Post or whoever made this whole article all about the conversation about, uh, I don't know. What What were they saying in the combo? Hey, we're going to, do you want, who wants to go? Do you guys want to go with us? You know, bring your kids or whatever. Uh, And then they leaked it and they wrote this whole article about it. And then the reporters are out there in front of the house and then they see that they have a dog that's like looking out through the front door window, even though they had a security guard 
keeping tabs on the dog and feeding the dog and stuff. It's just like now they had a whole spread about them leaving their poodle at home. You need new friends for starters. Like that that almost might be what aggravated me the most out of everything. It's Ted, shitty ass friends. Ted, if you need some real homies, bro, homies that blow that that good weed, that you know, <laughs> we don't be stressing. Ted, if you invite me to Cancun, somewhere warm, somewhere tropical, I don't give a damn if we in the middle of a winter storm or not. Holla at your boy. You know, we could have looked into the little private, hey Ted, uh, my partner work over there at the private uh, landing strip airport thing. Man, he said for like five racks more, we can go private, big dog. We could have got away with the shit, Ted. <laughs> First of all, how many, okay, how many couples did they invite? Do you know? I don't. I think it was like three or four. Just to narrow down, like, do you know who leaked that shit? Like, that is some whack-ass, weak-ass, flaw-ass, punk-ass, snitch-ass shit. We are living in the snitch era. Then people snitched on Morgan Whalen. Everybody's snitching. It's just snitch, snitch, snitch. Honestly, the snitching shit, I'm not talking about like you in the South Side of Chicago, drive by, killed a little girl. You, that's different. You know, sure, of course. Snitch. You yeah. need to snitch on that. I don't, I'm not talking about the street snitching type shit. I'm talking about the tell on your neighbor, fall in line, uh, bow to the regime, stick to the, I pledge allegiance to the official narrative. That type of shit, like airing out a, a screenshot convo of your homies the cruise family that to me is such a big component to to everything that's happening right now from the virtue signaling the social justice warrior type shit um people making you post something like oh rob i see you didn't post your your you know yellow square that is about you know saving taxi drivers from uber (laughs) or whatever all that good one (laughs) um the snitching stuff it's almost like if we're ever headed in the direction of ain't no more freedom of speech, ain't no more Second Amendment, and they got FEMA camps, and you really can't go against the grain, the snitching part is a big component of this draconian, that scary future that you know some people maybe stress about too much, and they want to like wake everybody up about it. That's a big part. So just be on the lookout for how that's encouraged. Like this is kind of different off subject but that dude john sullivan the blm dude from utah oh he doesn't bring it up he got paid i almost feel like that was pre pre preordained almost like um hey john as part of this thing we're gonna do where you guys are gonna be escorted in in these vans supposedly that's how it was when y'all get escorted in and security fucking waves y'all in and y'all go up in there and all these cameras rolling everywhere filming the riot filming the quote-unquote insurrection it was probably like, and don't worry, because three publications already pre-committed that if you have footage, they're going to buy it. So, yes, you might get in trouble. And, yes, you might get arrested. Yes, you might go to jail. But just know, you got 70, how much did they give them? 35 grand? 35 each. So, how many different publications? I think it was at least two that I saw, maybe three. So, he made me maybe made about 60 grand. Let's just say, right? Ballpark. Can you imagine if that was like pre-planned, like... All right, John, you're about to go in there and pull this crash dummy stunt. But these people done already agreed. So you already know. I mean, some of your lawyer money you're going to have to come out of that. And it's shit like that that you're talking about. And then we got uh, Cuomo over there killing old people. And it, that should be all people talk about right now instead of fucking Ted Cruz. But no, we're talking about a senator going to Cancun. Yeah, there's a there's a couple other. Again, I've been trying to tune out as much as possible. But there's, I'm sure there's a couple other things besides Cuomo that should be like, this is the big story. But, you know, again, we fall victim to just find a narrative so you can own the other team. Yeah. So, we so ne- yeah, we never want to fall into that. Although I've probably been guilty of it. Like, oh, it was a punk ass wind turbines. <laughs> Wait till they see these fire ass memes. <laughs> Which, as an entertainer and comedian, you're expected to do, right? But there is some truth to it. It's not like what you posted wasn't partially true. Yeah, the wind turbines definitely played a, a role. They definitely play, played a function. They weren't there when we needed them. Um, obviously, our base load energy came from fossil fuels, natural gas, nuclear, stuff like that. I mean, I get it. You want to have diverse energy sources, but we saw, like, in California... 
their shit was too diverse. It, the mix, the mix of their nuclear to wind to solar was in a way to where they were having rolling blackouts in the summer, just like on the annual. Yeah. Ours is like, okay, this is a 122 year fucking Arctic blast. Am I going to redo all my pipes to withstand Chicago level, level weather? Why would I do that if that shit ain't gonna happen again? Probably another hundred years. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't gonna do it, dude. That clip of video, uh, that video of Trump. I, I, you might have posted it on the podcast page actually, where he's talking about, you know, we're gonna have uh, the, the guy was telling Wind. him, yeah, that one. But the, the, he was like a panel of people, and the guy was saying, a scientist, I guess, or I don't know, geologist or something, that you know, summers are getting hotter, and we're we're estimating that winters are also gonna get hotter. He's like, no, they're gonna get colder. Like, I need a colder. You'll see. You'll see. He's like, with all due respect or whatever. And then here we are fucking. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> it never fails, man. Trump be saying shit. And he be knowing. Either he gets lucky or he just talks shit. But, you know, as time goes by, the public is going to see a contrast between what would Trump have done in this Iran situation? Or like, what would Trump have done with this China situation? What would Trump have done? In terms of this uh, Green New Deal, like across the board, whether it's foreign policy on some uh, peace treaty type shit, no new wars, bringing troops home, economy, putting kids back in school, all those things, we're going to have a contrast with, hmm, kids still aren't in school, STEMIs ain't out, uh, these other countries trying to punk us. The longer Biden is in office, the smarter Trump's going to look. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so hopefully, man, they need to hurry up with that shit so I could just be vindicated. <laughs> <laughs> and people could be like, man, I thought Chingo was a sellout. I thought he, he turned his back on his people. And I thought, but you know what, man? I'm older and I'm wiser. I may not know everything. I may be wrong about a lot of stuff. But I literally had this conversation the past couple of days about when I was on this, um, you know, they can't deport us all stuff and I had a very surface level understanding. I was definitely a single issue voter. I didn't understand what caused a recession. I didn't understand why we bailing this out. You know, I didn't understand a lot of shit. I didn't understand propaganda, um, a leftist agenda, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. So I fell for the hoaxes. I fell for the okie doke. I had Trump derangement syndrome. And I mean, we talked about that. That's been like a thing we always go back to. But um, I don't want Biden to do bad. I don't want the country to do bad. And I might have Biden derangement syndrome. Like I might get red pill to it. it's like, oh, he wasn't that old after all. And like, you know, maybe he wasn't a Chinese puppet after all. Or like maybe Kamala wasn't just right there. Oh, God, I mean, I, I wish I wish that, I know. that would he, come. But let's be real at this point. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm trying to give motherfuckers benefit I'm, of the doubt. I'm about to say, you're trying to give them way too much of a benefit of the doubt. It's a little too late for that. Yeah, because... And it's only been four weeks. Somebody might be sharing this clip to, to somebody that's like, has TDS, mm. and they believe the news, and they think I'm a sellout, and they might be like, well, at least Chingo said that there's a possibility he could be wrong about Biden, but... I mean, motherfucker is pretty old. <laughs> We're only four weeks into this administration, right? I think he even he even led one of his uh, recent answers to a question about I'm only four weeks into this, you know, job. Uh, almost like cut me some slack kind of thing. But he's left no room to cut any slack with the shit that he's been pulling. With the amount of executive orders, you mean? Executive orders, uh, the the things he says out loud. Like I don't, I, I didn't even pay attention to the town hall until after the fact. Like, I totally forgot that that was even a thing. And then to hear, obviously, you made the joke earlier about like uh, like blacks and Mexicans don't know mm -hmm. how to get online. Uh, the fucking what else was it? The um, oh the, the the China like trying to talk China politics like China like yeah. you know, geopolitical shit. He's like I probably shouldn't even be trying. Like what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, because obviously people like me, speaking for myself, I'm very dubious about the Biden's dealings with China over. Over some of these years, you know, whether Hunter Biden, Biden was flying over there and his brother Jim and, you know, whether there was some money getting stuck under to the gum, to the gum under the table when, when he was in with Obama. 
I'm very, you know, dubious. Like, I'm just very, like, uh, weary. Like, okay, well, what's going on, man? Is China trying to fucking do this culture war shit with us? And are they pulling all the strings to our institutions and these newspapers and all these newspapers? And, how, like, have they corrupted how many politicians? Bang, fang, fang. <laughs> you know what I mean? How many Swalwells are out there? How many spies? Are they buying land in Texas? Like, do they control our fucking power grid? Why did Biden allow that? Why aren't we allowed to say China virus? Is it really racist or are we just doing that to please them? Uh, how much are we being surveilled? What are they doing to our satellites? Like, how are they trying to fucking attack us from above? Um, is it a matter of time till the dollar collapses and they're fucking they, they're yuan or yuan, whatever they're... Yen. The yen? Yen way. They do, they do the yen too? Yeah. Oh, I thought, I thought, I thought Japan's money was yen. I thought it was all yen. I might be fun. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn, bigot. <laughs> bigot over here. Bigot Texan. I, I'll let you keep that damn yen. Keep that we, damn these, yen. I'll just take dollars and pesos. We're going to do that damn yen. I, I do have some pesos. Wouldn't mind spending soon. So uh, Good stuff. That's funny. I mean, like I said, I, I pray they do a good job. I pray they're not selling us out. Um, R.I.P. Rush Limbaugh. Um, R.I.P., yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I haven't, I, I never really jammed Rush Limbaugh. I never really got in. I didn't really like listen. I just remember being a kid and him being on TV talking real boring to me. Yeah. Because I didn't get into it. And I was like, ah, who's this dude? Switch. I don't get that shit. Yeah. Now, recently, after he passed, I'm like, man, let me go see if he's got a podcast and let me see if there's some episodes with him talking. So I got to kind of just listen and hear what he was saying. And I was listening to an episode where he was talking about, um, the January 6th thing mm. and how, you know, they were just going to crucify Trump and they're just trying to, you know, the same yeah. type of shit. So apparently he's like the godfather, the OG of all this, uh, like, I guess, conservative talk radio. Oh, yeah, yeah. Back in the day uh, when I was younger <clears throat> and a lot, you know, just dumber, younger and dumber, my dad used to tell me like, he, because he was a big Rush Limbaugh fan, like, yeah, hey, you remind me a lot of Rush, uh, of Rush Limbaugh, fucking the gift of gab, but too bad you're saying dumb shit, because I, I wouldn't agree with him back when I was in my early teenage years, right? And now that, like, he's dead, and to see all the people that are coming out and saying all this horrible shit about him, it's like, man, just let the dead, yeah. let the dead die and be dead. Yeah. Um, what's her name? Christella says some stuff, and I think people jumped on her, and I should have stayed out of it. I made my little comment. I like retweeted her, and I was like, "Oh man, he died of cancer!" Like, like, come on, man. Yeah, you know what I mean. But hey, I'm gonna just go my carefree route, smoke a whole bunch of weed, and just be like, "I don't give a fuck." That's your business. I don't know. Don't yeah. ask me, dude. I had no idea who that was, honestly, until yesterday. It. Yeah, a lot of people are like, "Who? Who is yeah. this?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, whatever." But. I mean, I'm not an expert on everything Rush Limbaugh has ever said. I'm not an expert on every segment he's ever had on his radio show. But, I mean, a lot of people were like, watch what the left does and watch what they're able to say and get away with. And ain't nobody finna cancel them. They're not going to get deplatformed. No one's going to give them a little slap on the hand. Ain't no, no apology tour. You know, you could just do that. Apparently, I don't know, maybe he he's had some, like, off the wall segments in the past to where it'll be justified in people's minds like oh those are just those crazy racist white people on the right and you can just say whatever you want you know because you're over here woke and you know you're an anti-trumper and you're a social justice warrior and you virtual signal so you can say what you want um i remember somebody saying that his i guess right hand man in the studio was a big black guy <laughs> and i was like huh all right. Well, I mean, you can't immediately just be like, oh, this guy's a racist and a bigot, you know, when his... And then they'll they'll take that and be like, oh, they just did that so they, they don't get... That way they can get away with saying more shit and you can't accuse them of being racist. They're always going to find a way. a way to justify it or a way to justify your train of thought, I guess. All right. Let's 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 say here coming up in 2021, you, you got another baby on the way. You got two girls already. Mm -hmm. What exactly of everything that's going on really like sparks interest under you right now like is, yeah like I, i'm sure i'm pretty sure you have your idea but maybe people play the same game like what do we all give a fuck about right now is it depending where you live obviously is it the climate is it biden is it china is it COVID? is it triple quadruple mass coming up is it what, what exactly is it 
is it the economy? Is it, do I need a fucking, do I need this plot of land sooner than I ever thought or ever wanted? You know, do I need to be more uh, self-sufficient? Do I need to follow Tim Kennedy MMA on Instagram so I can figure out how to fucking have food and grow, you know, be vegetables? Ta- be tactical. Be super tactical, yeah. Well, to me, a lot of that you just listed, almost like a lot of it overlaps and overlays, and a lot of it falls into a similar bucket. So I don't want to give a catch-all answer. Okay. However, I will just say that... um. In terms of my daughters, I want to make sure that they understand critical thinking and understand like the um, logical fallacies, Mm -hmm. how when people make arguments in a debate, they'll do the straw man, the straw man debate, or they'll do, I'm not an expert on all of them because I need to study that shit and and do some fucking flashcards, but I start to kind of pick them up in people's, in the memes or the metaphors how people conflate things, but I want to make sure my kids understand that people can lie to you with statistics. There's a book I want to get called How to Lie with Statistics. Mm. And the quote at the top is like Bill Gates, like, this is a very good book or some shit. It's like, yeah, bitch, because y'all lying with statistics. You know, they'd be on that, trust the science, believe the science. And it's like, that's why these kids ain't in school yet a lot of places because the CDC wants to put out one thing but then the teachers union is like, well, y'all got to spend a billion dollars to make sure y'all redo everything. And we ain't going back until all the teachers are vaccinated and y'all redo all the air filtration systems and there's plexiglass. And it's like, when are these kids going to go back to school, man? What Did you see the California teachers on that call that was leaked? Oh, they, no. They had the Zoom uh, open to the public without knowing. They were talking about how parents, like, all parents wanted to have their babysitters back. And uh, I bet you a large percentage of these parents are just uh, at home smoking weed. Or I know for a fact that they're just, you know calling their fucking delivery weed drivers but they're just talking mad shit and then uh, there was a couple of clips of it on somebody's post and then the last clip is is somebody you know it, it pans over to them they're like so and so said yeah we've got the meeting over and open to the public they're like what no like yeah and then so hella people out. saw it oh dude it's it's gone viral over the last <sighs> day or two i've been trying to stay off of this stuff man i'm telling you because <laughs> No, like seriously, man. No, I understand. People, yeah. people don't know this, but he, let me say this. Let me say this first. Like Ch- Chingo has a way of of really, like he says, caring. Like we all really care, right? But it also gets to a point where there's an overwhelming amount of things that needs attention that need to get tended to, and you'll you'll start feeling like you're drowning in the sea of other stuff that isn't quite as pertinent or important to what needs to be done. And here we are having this conversation well, in the cold. I'll give you, yeah, I'll give you an example. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Let me go to my, what did he say his Instagram page? So I was already trying to be better about managing my energy yeah. and my time and just making sure that like, like don't stress the fuck out just for the sake of being informed and informing others. Yeah. So as soon as I get on, um, fuck, I thought I shared it to the story. <sighs> what was it? It was something, man. It basically, long story short, is I'm like, okay, um, I got like 10 minutes to kill between calls and stuff. And oh, let me get on Instagram real fast. And as soon as it pulls up, it's like, Joe Biden uh, is considering some, something with Iran. Uh, he, he called the lid on it early, like went to bed. It's like 8 a.m. He's out for the day. He's, he put a lid on it. He's done for the day. Meanwhile, Kamala is taking calls with world leaders. Right. And something, something. I'm like, <laughs> I do the fucking SMH. I just shake my fucking head. I double tap that motherfucker, hit the heart. Das, 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 das. And I thought I reshared it to the story. Like, man, let me let people know this what the fuck you voted for. And it's like, oh, man, the second I log on, it's almost like your stress hormone goes, Voo. It kicks up a notch. And um, because this is how I'm a hypocrite. Okay. <laughs> this is how I'm a hypocrite, y'all. My, when I was at my sister's house, her son manages a restaurant way north of Humble in New Caney. Oof. They live in Pearland. So that's at least an hour drive. This is during freeze, 30 something degree weather. The roads might be dangerous type shit. You might have black ice or something. Hey, mom, uh, I got called in. Where, you know, he's, where's Eric? Where's Eric? Oh, he left. Eric! They called him in. Uh, who the fuck's eating food right now? <laughs> Who's eating out? Eric! 
And she's, I'm going to call his boss. And it's like, he's a grown ass man. He manages this entire restaurant. And I'm like, dude, sis, you need to like not stress out because now you're going to have two problems on your hand. One, he's out there on that road and the way you're reacting to him being out there on that road. Yeah. I was like, your stress hormone goes up, all your other bodily functions and stuff just get thrown off. You're not going to, just everything. You're breathing. Dr. Chingo over here. What's yeah. good points though? Yeah, because adrenaline, we started to get, we started to get addicted mm-hmm. to the adrenaline. We started to get hooked to stressing and it becomes a habit. So I'm, I'm giving her this advice. Meanwhile, every time I look at Twitter, look at this. Look at these teachers unions. Look at, man, let the kids go to school. Look, man, let me go listen to what Michael Berry had to say on the podcast. <laughs> see what, let me see what his take is. You know, because he interviewed that dude, Corey DeAngelis, who is like the main guy calling out the teachers unions. And he always tweets like, oh, this county in Indiana has chosen to fund students, not systems. Meaning the money follows the child. If a parent wants to pull their kid out of that school and put them somewhere else, they can. The um, what is it called? School choice or teach whatever it's called. Mm. Parents choice, whatever. So, yeah, man. <laughs> that cabron. Well, look. Okay, so what so we started talking about, like what you care about, and, and I understand. Like, oh, I, yeah, I, I yeah. think we all, I think we all, we, we get it. I just wanted to put that out there to see if there was anything that you were really like, you know, fired up about. Which is pretty much everything. It's hard not to. Like, we do have all the info at the touch of our finger. Like, as soon as you open this fucking thing up, a hundred notifications, and half of them people are pissed, and the other half people are trying to like reason yeah. with other people. Or one half of it is you're seeing how the left is spinning things. Like, you see. It's because your natural gas and your fucking fossil fuels, we need to listen to Greta and AOC and spend these trillions and more solar panels. Like she tweeted out, I think it was like, uh, this is exactly what happens when you don't pursue a Green New Deal. And, and Dave Rubin was like, this is exactly what ha- this tweet is exactly what happens. You know what the fuck you're talking about? He didn't say that. He said, don't know what you're talking about. But uh, it. It's all such a game. And and again, I've said this since I was little, probably like 13, 14. Like, life's not real. Jokingly, right? Because so many absurdities happen every day, day in and day out. And here we are kind of like living our lives. Like, you obviously have a more unique situation because you are literally a public figure, an entertainer. But you still have kids and a wife and a house and responsibilities that you have to be like informed enough about to to maintain and sustain right and then you have all the rest of us that have like uh our own businesses or we're creative in our own ways or, or whatever or, you know we run restaurants or what have you and we're just trying to make sense of it but you can't help but want to comment on it like we're all social commentators right that's mm. everything that everybody does you tune into barstool you turn into red pill tamales you turn into uh fucking mark cuban ta- on his instagram talking about china and hong kong and all whatever it is you're talking about mark cuban talking about china well i mean you know what do you say he's that big supporter of him because where do, the, where do they sell the most jerseys right where does the nba have a huge footprint like he's not trying to say anything bad about china he's not trying to talk out loud about hong kong all that stuff which is why he gets a lot of backlash so it, you, again and if you're a mavericks fan like i once was and if you're a fan of the nba you have to you want to say something about it if you feel like what you want to say makes sense and even if it doesn't you still want to say it because we can on our phones right mm-hmm. so it, it's tough to like not be a social commentator everybody does it like some people just do it better than others and some people do it really shitty which still gets attention because it like makes for a viral like oh my god did you hear what so-and-so said Mm -hmm. so it's we're in a really tight spot like everybody listening to this has their own opinions on things and i'm sure whether you have a hundred followers or a million followers on on social media like we want to talk about it but like you're saying it gets to a point where stress levels get so high that like what's this social commentary's (laughs) return to us and and I feel like I'm talking to a fucking wall, (laughs) too. I mean, don't get me wrong. We got the patrons. We got a lot of people on. um, Got a lot of listeners. If you're not signed up yet, you should sign up. Yeah, absolutely. Because we have new merch coming out. Um, Obviously, this this cold week put a damper on on some of this new merch coming out. And Um, our guests, but they're rescheduled or coming on. Yeah, we haven't rescheduled. Uh, We just couldn't work that well. We're too busy trying to stay warm and stuff. But uh, we want to make sure that the patrons have first dibs on all this stuff. We want to make sure that we're, you know, part of the conversation, um, chiming in, giving our take, providing content, talking shit, making fun, uh, you know, making fun of Joe Biden, you know, shit like that. Um, excuse, uh, sorry, Su- Supreme. <laughs> please su- don't turn Supreme the power reg- off. Supreme regime, please leave the lights on. Um, <laughs> but but like you said, man, it's like 
how many people are just like chingo shut the fuck up you just want to kiss trompa's ass and just take your l and we're following your page because you're supposed to be funny right now it's like bro i gave y'all 20 years of blood sweat and tears all <laughs> kind of mixtapes albums and merch and this and that and tours and and all kind of skits and youtube and that got deleted start a new one all kinds of stuff hours and hours upon hours of just stuff and um and it's like, okay, well, we decided to talk about some other stuff. And, you know, we're older and wiser and we want to chime in about actual global, not just, well, they're all crooked anyway and it doesn't matter. 